Which warrior is under the most pressure now with Boogie out? I don't think there's any question. It's Kevin Durant. Um, the way that Patrick Beverly has handcuffed him this series, getting him ejected in the first two games, picking up two technical fouls, fouling out, having more turnovers than shot attempts in game two, which was just a deplorable performance. This is a guy that we're talking about as arguably the best player in the world. This is a guy that we're talking about being the number one marquee free agent expected to be available this summer. We've been, uh, you know, uh, you know, talking and he's been filling headlines in terms of where he may end up. Will he elect to stay in Golden State? Will he elect to move on to the New York Knicks? Could he end up joining the very Clippers franchise that he's going up against right now? Because remember, the Clippers are going to have max dollars available at least for one, possibly and likely two. And so you take all of those things into consideration and the things that we've been talking about with Kevin Durant, Win, lose, or draw, we know what Steph Curry is. Win, lose, or draw, we know what Klay Thompson is. But when we're talking about Kevin Durant, with his greatness, there's a, a more expansive discussion. Kevin, Steph Curry is recognized universally as the greatest shooter we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Klay Thompson and Steph Curry are recognized as the greatest shooting backcourt we have seen. The complimentary parts that come associated with them, you can look at the Golden State Warriors and say that helps or hurts, but in the end, you know what they are, period. Kevin Durant, regardless of his greatness, we're still trying to discover because of off-court stuff in terms of his relationship with the media, in terms of what he can handle internally, people questioning his intestinal fortitude, et cetera, et cetera. There are so many storylines about Kevin Durant that I think because of that, this stuff will only create more questions if you don't show up and show out. I think there's more pressure on Kevin Durant than anybody. I wanted you to go first um, on this topic. Sure. Because I had three different choices. Mm -hmm. And I knew what you were going to say. No. Well, damn, Max, can you pick one? So you go first. Sure. And... I got three, and you didn't even name one of the three. Yeah. And, I knew you and, and I knew you wasn't going to name Kevin it's Durant, not, but go ahead. It's not, right. it's not KD. Glad we all know Look, each other so well. Let's talk about Boogie. Mm -hmm. Did they have Boogie last year? No. no. They win the chip? Yeah. Year before? Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. No Boogie. Boogie's new this year. Didn't win the chip with Boogie. No. Does, has Boogie made them better this season? Mm -hmm. No. Their plus minus is down when Boogie's on the floor. It's up when he's not on the floor. He has not made them better. I mean, we anticipate that he could give them a different look and make them better in the moment. I think moment he of truth will, that, ultimately, but, yeah. But, but, but he hadn't so far. Is Boogie one of their better starters? No, Boogie's their worst starter. They have five guys. He's their worst starter. Who, who, he's the least trade value, the least effective player of all their starters. Now, we understand a healthy Boogie Cousins a couple years ago is a different story. That's not what we're dealing with right now. So who's under the most pressure when Boogie goes down? Draymond Green. The Hamptons 5 lineup, he's now the big. And by the way, that's their best lineup. Draymond's under more pressure. Who else is under more pressure? Andre Iguodala. Because it's Andre Iguodala with the other four guys that makes them the best version of themselves, mm -hmm. not Boogie. And finally, who else is under the most pressure or the third most pressure? It's actually Sean Livingston, who has not had a very good year, by the mm -hmm. way. The Warriors are top heavy, but it's a lot on the top, right? All, like, they've got five or six or seven guys really play. Right. But they don't have a, a long bench. They're thin on the bench. Their depth is an issue. Really what Boogie is, he's a, he's a starter in name. I get that. He gets minutes. But really what Boogie represents is depth on that team. His absence means now the rotation is shorter or the guys getting quality minutes have to step up. That is, the two guys who don't start, Iguodala and Livingston, are now going to have to do more, and Draymond is now the big in their, in their Hamptons 5 lineup. That's who the pressure's on, not KD. How does it put more pressure on KD? I'll explain. Well, first of all, I'll explain the part about KD. Let me knock down your notion about when you bring up numbers as it pertains to Boogie Cousins and plus minuses. Let me tell you something, Max Kellerman. If I'm on a basketball court and I'm the star, why do the reserves matter? is because you need somebody to come close to holding down the fourth in order to spell for me so I can come back and I don't sit there and collapse from exhaustion. You can't just look at Boogie Cousins and look at the numbers and the plus minuses and say, well, you know what, they were better without him than they were with him on the floor. His relevancy comes from the perspective that not only could he give you points, but more importantly, 
He enabled the Iguodalas of the world and others to come in a little bit fresher, the loonies of the world and others. He's coming He's he, Exactly. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is we can't just look at a plus minus. We have to look at the fact that those guys are fresher. So the fact that he's gone could be somewhat detrimental, although I don't believe it will. What I'm telling you about KD is this. I know whatever you say about Draymond Green, Draymond is Draymond, Steph is Steph, Clay is Clay. But Kevin Durant has to be Kevin Durant because if he doesn't, if he's not Kevin Durant, it ruins everything. Draymond can struggle. If KD is on his game, they can make up for it. Eagle Dollar can struggle. If KD's on his reign, on his not, not is on his game, it makes up for it. It don't matter. If everybody else, if, if Steph and Clay do their job, which we anticipate they will do, KD is the key. Because the reason I bring up KD. And you would be right if we didn't see what we're seeing from KD with Patrick Beverly. If KD was being KD and this series was tied 1-1, I would not sit up there and dispute what you're saying. The problem is KD hasn't been KD. And that can't continue. Well, that cannot look, continue. That's a separate, that's a separate but issue. But that's what I'm saying. That's I why agree I with that. About, that's why the pressure's on him. If KD is not just not KD, but is not even like Paul George or Kawhi or anybody, right. he's not even just a two-way right. all-star or right. an excellent player, right. they could be in a lot of trouble. Okay. Even then they may win the championship because they're that good. But they could be in trouble okay. against the Rockets. What I'm saying is what's that got to do with Boogie, really? Boogie does not put extra pressure on KD because Boogie doesn't make them that much worse at the top. What he does is... The rotation of effective players is now one guy shorter. That really puts pressure on the other guys not in the top four. And all I'm saying is it wouldn't matter. We wouldn't even be worried about it if KD, if we weren't seeing what we would see from KD. If KD was going up against LeBron, look at like this. We would go like this. Man, what you going to do? You got to respond. How the hell are we going to say that if he's going up against LeBron, but we can't say that he's going up against Patrick Beverly? Well, no, you know who he's going to He got to show up. If they get by the Rockets, who he's going to have to worry about yeah. is the Freak what, what, what? or Kawhi. 